Hi there, this is Solid Sharon from Solid Sharon and Films and welcome to another Top 10. Today's Top 10 is Portmanteau Films or Anthology Films with an overarching framework that usually has a twist in the end. These were made popular originally in comic books, like DC Comics um, and studios in the 60s and 70s kind of used it to make kind of cheap films that had different stories so even if you didn't like a particular story there'd be another one coming along in like 15 minutes um, in Britain, the Amicus Studios, which were kind of the little cousin to Hammer films, did a ton of them, and quite a lot of them are featured in this top ten. Um, none of these films, I would say, are great films, apart from number one. But they're all tremendous fun, certainly if you're a fan of things like The Twilight Zone or you're a fan of kind of British actors slightly past their prime um, appearing in schlocky horror films from the 60s and 70s. Portmanteau has made a slight comeback with like A to Z of Death and um, Ghost Stories, which was um, made by Andy Nyman, obviously the guys from League of Gentlemen grew up kind of watching these films, so they're big fans of them. Um, again, they don't contain the meaning of life, they're just tremendous fun. So, kind of examples of films that didn't make this list um, would be Cat's Eye with Lewis Teague, um, the second Creep Show, Twilight Zone the movie, um, Tales at Witness Madness with Donald Pleasance and Jack Hawkins, um, Tales from the Dark Side and The Uncanny with Peter Cushing um, and Ray Milland which is lots of short stories about killer cats. But let's start with, I was going to say a modern film, but it's not really that modern. Um, it's from 1990, directed by Wayne Coe, and it's Grim Prairie Tales, or Spuck am Lagerfuhr, in German. This is the only film that's actually on DVD only. It's a German DVD. Um, it stars the wonderful James L. Jones and Brad Dourif, two stars of cult cinema themselves. And they play a bounty hunter and a clerk. And they meet in the desert and they have a campfire and they regale each other with scary stories. The stories include um, the early versions of the Ku Klux Klan, um, a wandering woman who isn't quite what she seems, um, an old um, guy disturbing an Indian burial ground, and a gunfighter haunted by the ghost of one of his victims. I mean, most of these, certainly the later, 
the kind of amicus ones in the 70s are generally about people being punished for misdemeanors or crimes that they've done and it's about people getting their just desserts um grim prairie tales is not necessarily a horror film um it's just entertaining and it's generally the relationship between james l jones and brad duriff and the banter between the two of them um which is really the highlight of the film kind of less so than the stories the stories are more slightly creepy rather than being horrific so that's number 10 Grim Prairie Tales number 9 is George Romero's Creep Show this is a nice Scream Factory version of it and again this one isn't what you would call a great film but it does have some lovely moments usually in some of these films there's a kind of comic a kind of funny tale that generally doesn't really work and in this case it stars Stephen King as somebody who finds a meteorite and some green goo coming out of the meteorite which ends up taking over his life Um, King wrote the script for Creepshow and Romero directed it Um, there's a nice story with Leslie Nielsen and Ted Danson who punishes Ted Danson by um, burying him in the sand up to his neck and waiting for the tide to come in um, Leslie Nielsen obviously at this point this was before his spoof days of Naked Gun and Police Squad so again it's weird seeing him in a serious role um, and he does play a very nasty piece of work who obviously gets his cup up, come up in. I'm not going to go into spoilers obviously because the enjoyment is and watching these and trying to guess the ending. Granted some of them are fairly predictable but they're always um, really enjoyable. There's a uh, another story about a strange creature who's kept in a cage and um, is a good way of getting rid of annoying spouses like Adrian Barbo. But for me the story that really always makes me uncomfortable is the one with E.G. Marshall who again plays a fairly horrible character um, who lives in this spotless futuristic apartment and he's a clean freak he wants everything clean and then he finds that he has a cockroach problem and that escalates into one of the most um, uh, disgusting scenes if you're not that comfortable with um, creepy crawlies. So Creep Show, which again uses the framework of the DC comic, um, it's entertaining. It's a lot better than Creep Show Two, um, but it's it's not the greatest. So next on the list, um, it's directed by Kevin Connor, and this is the first Amicus film. It's from 1970, 1973. It's from Beyond the Grave. Um, this stars Ian Bannon, Ian Carmichael, Peter Cushing, Diana Doors, Donald Pleasance, and David Warner, as long as well as a young Ian Ogilvy and an even younger Leslie Ann Down. And the framework for this one is Peter Cushing owns an antique shop and characters come in and either steal things, 
so they've got to be punished or fiddle with the prices and they've got to be punished. Peter Cushing owns the shop and strangely enough it does kind of remind you of Stephen King's Needful Things because Peter Cushing um, may or may not be just a shop owner. The stories are really quite good. Um, there's one with David Warner and a slightly possessed mirror and Warner gives a really good performance as somebody who comes under the spell of the mirror and has to do um, things more on haunted mirrors later in the list. There's also a really creepy story with Ian Bannon and Donald Pleasance. Um, Ian Bannon likes to talk himself up. He's browbeaten by his wife Diana Dors. Um, so he steals a medal from the antique shop and builds a rapport with Donald Pleasance who sells string and such um, on the street and gets invited back to Donald Pleasance's house for dinner and meets his daughter and um, his life becomes a lot more enjoyable meeting them but there's something going on forces at work um, again I'm not going to go into spoilers but it's a nice creepy um, little story um, the story with Ian Ogilvy and Leslie Landown is about a large ornate door that Ian Ogilvy buys um, which opens up into another room it's very Edgar Allan Poe um, and that leads to a dark discovery of where the door and what the other room and another world um, leads to. Again, not going to go into spoilers, but again, it's got a really good framing story. Peter Cushing is fantastic as he generally always is. Peter Cushing does appear in quite a lot of these films. Um, so sometimes it is hard to remember the stories because they do tend to all bleed together, especially if you watch them all in a bunch, as I've done. Um, but From Beyond the Grave is a really nice one. Next one on the list is The House That Dripped Blood. Again, from Amicus. This is from 1971, um, and again this stars Peter Cushing, um, Christopher Lee, Ingrid Pitt, John Pertwee, um, and Denham Elliott. And it's the framework is the police investigating a number of suspicious deaths to people who have um, rented this specific house. Granted the letting agent is AJ Stoker. Um, Peter Cushing is in the story of a waxwork of this man's wife who people can't help but fall for but there is a, a price to be paid. Um, Denham Elliott is in a little creepy story about he's an author who creates this psychopathic killer but the psychopathic killer starts appearing to Denham Elliott um, so he's slowly going mad or is he? Um, Christopher Lee gets a really interesting story as a father um, of a little girl who is looking for a tutor for the little girl. They've moved around, um, his wife died in suspicious circumstances um, 
and he is very he treats the little, the little girl kind of quite badly and he's very um, abrupt with her um, because she may not be as innocent as she appears to be um, Christopher Lee gives a really good performance and it's a nice little story and for the comic relief almost it's the story with Ingrid Pitt and John Pertwee called The Cloak where John Pertwee plays this hammy horror actor um, Ingrid Pitt is the actress and they're playing a a vampire they're in a vampire film um, and John Pertwee goes to this shop to find um, a new um, outfit and he's given this cloak by the rather suspicious looking um, shop owner and the cloak turns him into a vampire and with much hilarity goes on um, and it's usually enjoyable. That's the house that drip blood. Well worth checking out in this lovely second sight films release. Next on the list is another amicus. It's Torture Garden um, from 1967. So it's one of the earlier um, amicus films directed by Freddie Francis who actually appears on this list three times. Um, the framework for this is Burgess Meredith as Dr Diablo in this carnival um, and each of the customers gets to look at themselves in the future. Again this stars Jack Palance um, and Peter Cushing's in this one as well. Um, and this has now some of the Amicus films I should say were actually written by Robert Block who of course wrote Psycho but he also did lots of short stories and um, Amicus of Rosenberg and Sabotsky filmed a lot of his short stories in these anthology series so you get um, a nice story of a man who's having an affair and leaves his wife but is in a car accident um, and then who he appears to be um, isn't necessarily who he is which doesn't make any sense um, you also have Jack Palance um, in an episode with Peter Cushing who Peter Cushing may or may not be keeping Edgar Allan Poe locked away um, and Jack Palance is a huge Poe fan and wants the character to write for him um, it's perhaps not the best one but there's still a lot of fun to be had um, and obviously Indicator, I think this is out of print now, but Indicator do have a bunch of really good extras on it as well. So that's Torture Garden at number six. Number five is Vault of Horror, which is available on the double disc with Tales from the Crypt. But this is Vault of Horror which is um, from 1973, directed by Roy Ward Baker, who, strangely enough, appears twice on this list. Um, and this features characters who are trapped in a lift and go down in the lift and they're stuck in this vault. And they tell each other about their recurring nightmares. So there's one about a man who is trying to find his sister and tracks her down in this small town where everybody may be something suspicious. 
There's one about a magic trick, um, a disappearing rope trick, which is stolen um, by Kurt Jurgens, and obviously revenge is wreaked upon him and his wife in a fairly nasty way. Um, there is Tom Baker, who's an artist, who gets wronged and somehow for his revenge he manages to find this thing where if he paints somebody whatever happens to the painting happens to them um, but he also has to do a painting of himself which he hides away so it's not damaged um, this also stars Denham Elliot as his foe in this story um, and again it's quite a a nasty little um, story as far as the characters get their comeuppance. Um, you also have the wonderful Terry Thomas who loves everything to be neat and his wife's always messy and he continually harps on to her about everything's got to be neat so um, she takes that into her own hands um, and yeah, I'll leave that one there. Again, the stories are a lot of fun. Um, the twist in the tale is perhaps predictable, but it's just... All these films are just enjoyable little treats. Again, they're not going to give you the meaning of life, but they're just fun ways to spend an hour and a half. So number four... Is Asylum again on second sight and this is from 1972 and again this is Roy Ward Baker who directed it and again it stars Peter Cushing and Herbert Lom and Robert Powell amongst others and the framework is Robert Powell goes for an interview at this asylum and he speaks to Herbert Lom, who's a doctor there, and the previous doctor has went insane and is now one of the four people who Robert Powell gets to interview and he has to figure out which one's the doctor. Um, so we have a story with Charlotte Rampling and her alter ego. We have a story with Peter Cushing as um, as a man who employs a tailor to make a very strange suit for a very strange purpose. You also have the story of a man who's having an affair who wants to get rid of his wife and chops her into little pieces um, but the pieces won't uh, stay dead so again let's get nice stories and the framework is really quite nice and quite um, chilling so that's number four, Asylum. Number three is Tales from the Crypt, from the double bill with Vault of Horror. Again, this is Amicus. This is from 1972. And again, it's Freddy Francis. Um, and Tales from the Crypt stars um, Ralph Richardson, along with Peter Cushing. Um, who else have got Ian Hendry, Joan Collins, um, Patrick McGee, Richard Green. Um, so these tourists get stuck in catacombs. Ralph Richardson is this um, creepy dungeon keeper. He's dressed like a monk. Um, 
this has probably the most moving and sad story in it um, of Peter Cushing who is kind of a rag and bone man who likes the kids um, and has um, cats and dogs and these rich people take a dislike to him and pretty much try to ruin his name um, besmirch his character and he ends up killing himself on Valentine's Day and then wreaks his revenge essentially from beyond the grave um, again it's got some really good stories which I can't think off the top of my head um, but it's certainly another one that I would recommend picking up even though I'm not giving you any reason to pick it up because I can't remember <laughs> again like I said the stories do tend to like bleed into each other um, but that's Tales from the Crypt I recommend buying this because you get two for the price of one and then you can actually watch them and remember what the stories were this is number two It's Doctor Terror's House of Horrors. Again, another amicus one with Christopher Lee, Peter Cushing, Donald Sutherland, a very young Donald Sutherland, and the bizarre casting of Roy Castle, um, who is obviously more famous for the TV children's TV show Record Breakers, and also Alan Fluff Freeman, the Radio One DJ. And this is about five strangers. In a train, um, Dr. Terror's House of Horror is his cards. And they're tarot cards um, and he reads each character's future. Also, Christopher Lee is the, the snooty, uptight one who doesn't believe anything. But he's the last one to be told his future. So we have a werewolf story. We have... A Creeping Vine story with Alan Freeman. We have Roy Castle going to the Caribbean and stealing some voodoo music and bringing it back to London um, and suffering from a terrible amount of wind. And Donald Sutherland is involved with a vampire story. And this has arguably the second best framing story about why they're on the train and where they end up. Um, again, it's great work by Cushing, who's obviously having a blast, um, and Christopher Lee being Christopher Lee. And it's just wholly enjoyable. It's Dr. Terror's House of Horrors, and I can actually remember the stories in that one. And the number one portmanteau film um, and just one of the best films of all time you'll probably be able to guess it it's 1945's Dead of Night which is truly portmanteau in the sense that it was directed by different people um, so there's four stories and they're directed by Charles Crichton Alberto Cavalcanti, Basil Dearden and Robert Hamer Dead of Night is just a stone cold classic. Again, it's about an architect who goes to this country house, but he is sure that he's been there before. He knows how things will pan out. He knows how who'll come into the house and who'll say what, because it's all part of a recurring dream or nightmare he's had. Um, so it's the best framing device. Um, the stories are go from mildly unsettling to truly creepy. There is the famous inserted golf ghost story, which is for humour purposes, which doesn't quite fit with the rest of the film. Um, 
but I think that was just for us a bit of light relief. The first story is mildly um, creepy about a man in hospital avoiding an accident. Then you have one about a hide and seek game in a huge house where the girl in the country house that the architect's at um, tells the story of finding a little boy who's not on the guest list. Then you have the golf story. Um, and then we have the classic haunted mirror story, um, which shows a different room. And as the character just goes more around the bend um, and loses reality with which world he's actually in, that's a really creepy story. And then obviously the famous one with um, the ventriloquist dummy and Michael Redgrave, which obviously was like remade as magic with um, Anthony Hopkins. But this is just like so creepy. And then the final kind of montage as we find out what happens with the architect is just so unsettling. And just brilliantly done. Again, if you haven't seen Dead of Night, this is a brilliant Blu-ray by Studio Canal. It's the one film out of this group of um, portmanteau films that I would definitely recommend. The rest are, if you just love 70s um camp and films with twists and kind of famous actors doing things that you wouldn't necessarily expect them to do um, all these films are just an absolute blast but Dead of Night is the one film that's a stone cold classic um, yeah so thanks very much for watching I apologise for not telling you all the stories of every film because like I said sometimes they all bleed into one huge 10 hour portmanteau film um, but I hope you enjoyed it please let me know in the comments below if you've seen any of these films what you think of them and what your favourite portmanteau film would be so this is a solitary woman saying thanks very much and thanks for your patience and hopefully we'll see you again farewell <laughs>